Hello, good evening. This is Dear Sir and I am Dr. Ken Roy Burke. Welcome to another evening where we have some conversations. We're talking back to school and I'm so happy to have all of you tuning in with me this evening. As, as I said to you last week, we're going to continue the conversations. We believe that they're extremely important. And just this evening, we had a wonderful, wonderful um, experience of hearing our minister talk about some conversations that she had with some of the parents of our nation, um, several persons from the Parent Teacher Association. This evening, we want to hear from you. Tell a friend that we're on, and I want you to tune in. I will also call us at 434-1790. 434-1790. Call us and get involved in this evening's program. At this time, I'm going to pause for a cause. Hi, I'm Dr. Hope from the Smile Center. I practice holistic dentistry. I am seeing tooth decay. In some cases, all of the front teeth have cavities. And when you have a cavity, it is a lot of pain and anxiety that a child goes through. Difficulty communicating at school, learning at school. Their self-confidence decreases. Their emotional trauma increases as well. Yeah, sugary drinks are the major contributor to the cause of tooth decay. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, we can start by cutting out sugary drinks at schools. Act now. Protect our children's health. Support policy that restricts unhealthy foods and sugary drinks in schools. A message from the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados, Pan American Health Organization, United Nations Children's Fund and Partners. And welcome back. Now, this evening, we want to talk a little bit more about back to school, and we have some persons that we're going to be engaging this evening. We're going to um, have one or two of them on the telephone, as well as we're going to hear a few clips, and we want to talk to you this evening. Um, I want you to call us again. I said 434-1790, 434-1790. Um, contact us and let us have a conversation. We want to really talk about back to school and all that's been happening. Now, I have had the experience over the last two days of taking two children back to school. I had the opportunity to take my two children back to school. And in all honesty, I have felt extremely comfortable in the environment. I have felt as though the, the school has really planned for um, the, 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 the back to school environment and I know that it is not easy. One thing that I want to, to do is to spare a thought for our principals or the administrators of our school. It must be challenging coming up with all these different permutations and looking around also and seeing even in the US and some other places that there's a second wave now of, of COVID-19 because of back to school, back to church, all those uh, major gatherings. So this evening, I am blessed to have on the line with us Heather Bryan. Heather Bryan is the principal at the People's Cathedral Primary School, and I'm welcoming her this evening to just share with us very briefly what it has been like over the past couple um, weeks. This, this morning, we heard that she has not had a vacation. She's just been planning and planning and planning. So this evening, we want to talk with her for just a few minutes. Um, Heather, are you there? Yes, I am. Welcome to Dear Sir, and we are extremely happy to have you with us. Now, we want to talk a little bit, Heather, about the, what, what has been happening over at the People's Cathedral School. We know that um, the private schools seem to have started a little bit before the public schools. Tell us a little bit about the journey that it has been so far, all the preparations that you're putting in place. And also, if you could probably give us a little insight on how your parents are responding. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on your program. Yes, the journey started <laughs> as soon as the online program ended. We recognized that we needed to get our school ready for whatever phase would be, um, we would be taking come September. And hence, my deputy principal, Mrs. Janice Lewis, and myself, along with members of the board, we came together and we looked at what we would be doing and we recognized we will try our best to go for the face-to-face. -face. And I'll tell you quickly why, because having gone through the online program, which I would say we came out after a rocky start, we came out, I would say, 
pretty um, well in terms of what we had um, accomplished. But we also recognize the disadvantages that came with it. And to me and uh, my counterparts, we think it, you know, was not what we would want. We would want the best for our children with the education. There were so many children who did not take up the online program, so which means they start out this um, school year, you know, at a... Uh, a any, idea, any idea, Heather, on why they did not want to take up the online program? Ah, uh, well, I would say some of them were those who were still working and would not have had anyone to be with the children. Some of them were not okay with the online program and they found it difficult. Some of them felt it was just too much for them and, and I will be very frank with you that some of them felt, no, well this is something I can do at home so I don't need the, the program. No, 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 Heather, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick a pin there for you and I'm going to say this to you. Listen, yeah. there are several parents who, who started with that mindset who believe they could get it done. And I am telling you that several of them fell by the wayside because teaching the, the, the entire pedagogy and everything that goes along with teaching is not an easy task. And several persons thought they would have been able to handle and manage that process by themselves. They thought it was just giving the child work. But I don't think that many of them were able to continue on in that way. And yes, and you would also know that we are a private school and some felt bound up in what I just said is that, no, I'm not going to pay money for this. But I can say to you, Dr. Burke, that um, by the time we came to the end of that program, because we reviewed and we taught, we reviewed and we taught, and by the end of that term, I can say to you that we accomplished in terms of um, what we were teaching even more than if we were in school. Being the third term, you know, you have your exams and, and all like that. So we went right through to the end, and I can say that the what came in from the parents when we had our feedback, I mean, I was overwhelmed. And our chairman, he was there at one of the meetings, and he heard all that was said. So we had a good session by the time we came to an end. However, when we went back to school for the class fours, we recognized, and the teachers of class four said, you know what? Yes, we did well on the online, but... Having the children face-to-face, -face, we were able to get more out of them, and we also recognized that they had, um, you know, dropped a bit, and we, the, the teachers had to do so much more to get them up to the level that they were prior to the COVID-19. And I, I want to pause shutdown. here, and I want to say congratulations to the school again for another strong year. Um, excellent results again in the Barbados Secondary School Entrance Examination. Great job again. Thank you so very much. It's because that we have a, a cadre of um, staff members who recognize what it, our purpose is in terms of education. And we work together as a unit and to make sure and let the children know that we expect great things from them and we work with them and hence the, the results. Yeah. Yes. So we decided then we will come back to school. And as you alluded to it um, prior to my speaking with you, it has not been an easy job. And as I said earlier, Mrs. Lewis and myself, we had no vacation. Every day, if we were not at the school, we were still thinking, how can we go about it? And working then with the, the chairman and the, the co-chairman of the board, and we went to town, as it were, and we made sure that we turned every stone to see how we will make sure we meet the, the distances, the safe distancing um, protocol, and we made sure when it came to the sanitizing of the school, we left nothing on, um, no stone unturned. And if we had to spend the money to make sure that our school, our plant was ready, that was done. And I, we I want to ask you this, I want to ask you this before you, you go any um, further. Yes. No, no, you said that, that you've tried several different options in it. Um, how did you come about with it, with the final option? Because right now, I think that that is one of the, the challenges that some other schools are having, that they've been um, asked, you know, to, to come up with their plan. And um, I'm just wondering, how did you how, how did you come up and feel at the end of the day that this is good enough for us to be able to implement? Right. It is, first and foremost, the, the objective. And we wanted to have our children back. 
school, those who would have opted out before for whatever reasons, we wanted them back on the plan. And also we recognize that there were some parents who would have gone back to work. So when we go online, who will be on the other end with the children? And with all of those things, we recognize, you know what, once we get this work, we would have the answer for the, the children and the parents. And to tell you, yes, some parents um, were still a bit um, fearful coming back to school, having to wear the mask um, for the prolonged periods and so on. And they saw all the reasons why, you know, the face-to-face might not be the best, even though they wanted to get the children back out of the house. Yeah? But yes. they had those fears. So we had is that, is that fear Is that fear also being... Um demonstrated by the children? Um, well, I'll tell you, when we went, came back with the class force, we did not see that fear. And today, yesterday we started, we have a phasing um, process for the return to school. We started yesterday with two-year groups, mm-hmm. and as we went around the school to just see how the children were settling in, we, the children were as normal. Don't they knew what they had to do? We made sure that we, you know, drilled in them in terms of the social distancing. You know, from time they would want to talk, but you remind them social distancing and so on. And I would like to share here that we had um, preschool. And when I went into that preschool class, you would have thought that they were here, that they were the class fours. Those little children were very um, interactive with the teachers and they were doing what they had to do. No fear. No, no crying. One little one started to cry, but that did not last long. So I think it is we, the parents, and, and we know that it is always the parents who put um, the fear in the children. But those that we have had in yesterday and today, we've had no problems. They are back, and the teachers are on the ball. Yeah? But I will say here it was not the easiest of journeys because we had to make sure we had um, the, the furniture make sure that we had the furniture that would service our children. And having that, how would we get now it fit into the classrooms to make sure we satisfy that protocol with the um, safe distancing? And that, I would say, would have been one of our major challenges. What now, we now, had you see that, now, you see that, Heather, one thing that I would want to say here is that I think that some people think it is just as long as we, we distance the children, as long as we sanitize their hands, everything is going to be all right. And I think that that is the mindset sometimes of some persons who are, are um, they believe in that, listen, there's no reason why these children should be out of school and, and um, get the children back to school. You're hearing that, that statement. But there's so many things that you have to do to ensure that children are safe. And, and, and obviously, as an administrator, you would have had to take some of those things into consideration. Probably share have- with us two or three of those things that... that children do not that now we're not talking about going back to church we're not talking about going back to work things that children do that we that that we you would have had to take into consideration that probably we are not thinking about as as the public that children i mean we are all social animals but children more so Mm -hmm. children just like to be in the company of other children and yes we would say they were safe at home during the shutdown and the um, online program, but they still would be missing this part of being able to socialize. Yeah, so then um, my daughter said to me, mm-hmm. I can't wait to get back to school to and play with my friends. Correct, correct. <laughs> so even if it is um, like today, I, I was listening and I heard a set of children and I said, I'm hearing some noise. Where is it coming from? So I went to a class and they were all sitting in their chairs, their masks were on, but they were having fun talking to each other from their distances. They enjoyed that and this is what they look forward to. Also, they look forward to seeing their teachers and we too look forward to seeing them face to face. We miss them as well. They missed us, they miss their friends, and we miss them as well. And so far, it has been a joy these past two days. As I said, it has been hectic because I'll tell you, Dr. Burt, even um, one of our ancillary workers, he worked with Mrs. Lewis and myself and some teachers putting down the markers, making sure that we had the 
right measurements and, you know, and putting mm-hmm. those markers there so that the chair and the desk would not be moved. And that in itself is a tedious job. You know, and you think you got it here, but then when you look, no, so you have to turn it around. And so it is a tedious job. And mornings, early, we are at the school and we are leaving there late on evenings just to make sure that the children who are entrusted into our care, that they are safe. And that is one of the things uh, that for the past two days, I, I, um, for, I did not do like all of the things that I would do on orientation, uh, talking about the academics and mm-hmm. so on. Mm-hmm. What we try to do at People's is to those parents who were sitting in the auditorium listening to us, and we made sure that we spoke to them about all that we have been doing to ensure that their children will be safe while on the compound of People's Cathedral. And we also let them know that if we don't take good care of their children, it means we're not taking good care of ourselves. So, so are you are you still sensing that family. anxiety? You're still sensing that anxiety from some of the parents? Uh, well, no, because they sat um, and they listened. And when I asked about questions, you know, it would seem as though I um, allayed some of their fears. And I would say the Tuesday, the Monday, um, I was handed a phone and I was told, speak to this parent. She wants to know about coming back to school. She was having some fear and some trepidation, you know, and I sat and I spoke with her. She asked me some questions and I spoke with her and I could say that at the end of our conversation, she said, Mrs. Bryan, I thank you so, so, so very much because you have put to rest the fears that I have and therefore when it is term, um, time for me to bring in my child, I would have no problems because we had two sets. One came in yesterday, right. one came in today. We're doing that phase then so that by Friday, all would be back to school because, um, Dr. Burke, it would not have been that easy to bring in three hundred over 300 children at the same time. So that is why we made the decision that we would bring them, phase them in. And we, as we phase in, we would also be able to see how we need to tweak whether it is how we, um, they come in on mornings, how they leave on afternoons, and so on. And by the end of this week, it is our prayer that we would have, you know, everything right. near as possible to what it should be. But oh, okay, it has so, been a so, long so, so Brian, just, just, I want you to just hold the line a minute as we take a, another break for another commercial compliments of the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Very well. My name is David Beyer and I'm an emergency physician. I've seen hundreds of patients, including many young people with type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. One in five adult Barbadians has diabetes, which is a major burden on our health system. Drinking one sugary drink a day increases the risk of a child being overweight. We need to cut out sugary drinks in schools, which can decrease the rate of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Act now. Protect our children's health. Support policy that restricts unhealthy foods and sugary drinks in schools. A message from the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados, Pan American Health Organization, United Nations Children's Fund, and partners. And welcome back to Dear Sir. Um, we are having a conversation this evening with some principals, and we have online... Heather Bryan from the People's Cathedral Primary School. So Heather, we were, we were having a little discussion here and I, I, I think that we're now to the place where, as you said, you are looking, you're assessing, you're reassessing, you're taking it each day, step by step. Well, you're only um, a couple days into the term. So I know that you're trying your very best to um, move through as easily as possible to, until you reach your desired goal. You say you're doing a phased approach. When, 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 will the, when will the final phase be? On Friday of this week, we would have then all of our students back to school. So that come Monday the 21st. And mind you, they are in today. Those who came in yesterday, they are back with us today. Those who came in today will be back with us tomorrow. So that by Friday, every would have the full complement of the student body at school. But we have still started to get the children oriented, and I should say reoriented, to being in school, right? So we might not be doing all of the subjects at the moment, but 
they are getting to know their new teachers and teachers are getting to know them and they are working together with expectations expectations of the children from the teacher, what the teacher expects, and vice versa, and working with them, and also to answering calls from parents and so on. But I would say so far, we have not had any adverse um, comments, because even when they came to pick up the children, I, both myself and my deputy, we were around and, and so on as they came this afternoon to pick up. And we must say that the, the compliance is, I mean, it is ex extraordinary compliance in Whoa. terms of meeting the, the time phases that we say for the pickup and they are there. So the parents, have, the parents have been well behaved. Yes. That, yes. that is good. That is very right through. Very right good. through. This, this is their sir. For those who are listening, this is their sir. 434-1790. 434-1790. You can give us a call if you have a question. The next couple of minutes that we have with um, Heather Bryan from the People's Cathedral Primary School. You were saying, Heather? Yes. So we have had, as I said, with the um, we had the parents in this morning of those year groups that came in, and we spoke with them, and then they had their conversations with the respective teachers. And we know that normally during orientation, the parents they do get to go to the classrooms and you know and and enter interact with the teachers and so on there, but we, we ask them to bear with us for this um, year because we would have created our bubbles. We have the classrooms properly um, sanitized and so on, and we did not want then to be those areas to be compromised. And I know some of them might would have, oh boy, but I wanted to see, but they did work with us. They understood that at the end of the day, it is all about the safety of their children. And we know children, and when they get home in the evening, they're going to tell them what happened in the classroom. Full story. And yes, <laughs> right. So, you know that. But I want to say here that I go back to the cadre of um, staff that we have, in that every single one, as I said, from the chairman of the board right down to ancillary members, they put in work to ensure that Tuesday morning, because it was like Tuesday morning, we have to have this plant in a state of readiness to welcome the first set of children and parents. And so we work through weekend. I mean, you name it, we work. We are tired. If I say to you that we are not tired, I would be lying. Yeah. But it was worth it. And yesterday morning, I would say to you that after I got down from the platform, having spoken to the, the children and the parents and so on, I felt... It was like a load lifted, a but also a sense of satisfaction yeah. to know that, you know, what we had worked toward, we saw um, yesterday morning and the same thing this morning where the parents just worked with us. Wow. And that is all we want. Once they work with us and we work with them, the children, because at the end of the day, it is all about these children and we want to see these children educated. Yes, indeed. Yeah. No, no, Heather, I'm going to ask you um, a tricky question. I, I have to ask you a tricky question because I, I think that there will be a sense, obviously, of of, of um, wanting to know if you've seen your role affected uh, negatively, I suspect, or positively. Um, what, what has been happening in that area? Are, are parents more inclined to come or, or are you seeing a drop? Are you monitoring so far? How, how is it going? Well, we have been monitoring it even before we returned to school. We have been monitoring it. And when I look at those classes that have returned and those who would have responded via email and so on, yes, we would have lost um, a few, but nothing significant that we would say, well, we have been really affected. Yeah, so right now, I think the parents... They know that they know they might grumble and so on, but they know that they know that they get service for their money at People's Cathedral. Okay. And therefore, they would want to continue to have that service where their children's education is concerned. So, yes, as I said, you know, you would find out that is because there are reasons. And most of them who were not returning, they did say it had nothing to do with the school, but most of it, and as we would know, financial, because there are many um, parents out there now who do not have a job. And if they do have a job, it is not paying as much. Or they might be the only now breadwinner. 
So right. the money they might have been paying in school fees now have to go to other areas, you know. So these are things that we, we, we can't really um, right. say can't isn't happening. So we have to understood, give it to that. Understood. So, so technically, technically, obviously, the private school will also feel the effects of the economic downturn because we, we are so. told that there are 30, over 35,000 persons right now unemployed mm -hmm. in Barbados. So I would suspect okay. that somewhere in there you may have a few of your yes. parents and yes. unable, obviously, to be able to continue in private education as they would, would want yes. to. And for that, and you know, we do wish them well in their endeavors because, as I said, they all um, let us know it isn't the school that is the problem, yes. um, but it is just having to use their common sense and see what would work for them as well as the child at, the, at this I'm time. sure you also have an open-door policy if you need to come back at any point in time. Yes, I'm definitely, sure because in to. any email that I send out to them, you wish them well in their endeavors. And if they want to come back, and for me, that is something that I have always practiced. If for some reason you have to leave the plant that I am managing, I send you off with God's blessings. And if you have to come back, I welcome you once there is space. Wonderful, wonderful. Because my bottom line is the education of the children of Barbados. I put that first. And wonderful. my staff as well. So, so Heather, um, I, I, I really, I, I must admit, I did not expect to hold you so long. I didn't expect <laughs> you would stay with me so long. Um, I, I was me looking neither. to see if I there were any. I didn't expect that either. <laughs> yes, but, but uh, it sounds almost as though you have things so well organized. You were able, they were just able to flow from you. And I'm getting that, that, that you and the team, you have things well organized and that you're feeling a lot more comfortable. This is midweek, so I know that. Come midweek, you're feeling a lot more comfortable and working through it. Now, my question to you would be would be this. What 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 do you have in place? Obviously, there are parents who will say to you, listen, I, I, I've seen what you have at the beginning of the term. But what do you have in place to ensure you don't drop your guard, that you have certain um, things put in place to make sure that you continue the good work and that you continue to keep the children safe as you move forward? First and foremost, for me, who I am and haven't spent 50 years in the educating of children in Barbados, I can't see myself. Something will have to be gone really wrong with me to drop my guard. And because of the relationship that uh, myself and my deputy have with the members of our staff, we work together as a team. And we have seen that, that, that unity solidify over the, the past years. And therefore, when the staff is happy, and um, you will find that they will go to the uttermost to ensure, and, and once they recognize this is where I come to work every day, mm -hmm. and I should find some joy. And once I recognize that my superiors are working with me and for me, they will do what they would have to do. And all <clears throat> that we would, as administrators, would have to do is if we see, because we must be vigilant, and that is what I said to our staff members, we have to be vigilant, 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 looking out for just what you, you would have mentioned there, because we do not want to drop our guard. We do not want to become complacent. We do yes. not want to relax, because that is the head time then that something could happen. You know, we might have been doing all well so far, but because we've come become complacent and so on, and we drop our guard, then everything goes up in smoke. So therefore, and because, again, we have the interest, the sole interest of these children who are sent to us to shape and mold, and especially in a Christian, in a Christian environment, we, we owe it to Almighty God, mm -hmm. to the parents, to the children, and to ourselves to make sure that we keep these children safe. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much for taking some time out this evening to be with us. We really appreciated the conversation we had with you. And um, 434-1790, 434-1790, this is there, sir. We're having some conversations again this evening. We're hearing what principals are doing as they, as they ready themselves for back to school. I don't know if there may be anybody who may want to give us a call at this point in time. And hear what, what uh, probably even ask um, Principal Brian a question, if there's anybody. 
We're encouraging you to give us a call, 434-1790. And welcome back. And welcome back. Okay, so we have we have um, a, just a, a little feedback from a couple of the principals. I'm going to ask Larry to just play a couple of those clips for us. And we're going to just discuss those for a, a few moments. Well, thank you ever so much. Yes, indeed, our preparations have been going very smoothly. And the main reason is because we started early. Our management team, we were very proactive and we started early. And not only did we start with the ideas, but we actually came to the school as a staff. And we were able to look at our classrooms because remember, every school is unique. And no school has been built for established social distancing protocols. So the first thing that we did was to ascertain how many children can be accommodated in the classroom with the social distancing. And from that, we knew straightway what kinds of approaches we would have had to have. We would have spoken to our parents. We would have had an orientation for our first-time parents last week, Friday, and we would have explained that the little ones, we will have the shifted system for them, and also those who would have moved out of reception who would now be five, we know that they would probably have little problems handling those devices. So we said, let us have them in for the shifted system but for the others, we are looking at the blended approach. And for the orientations that occurred on Friday, those that occurred today, we had the infant A's and the infant B's in today. And the parents were very understanding. In fact, they actually applauded when we told them what we were doing in order to minimize any health risks to our student staff, parents, and visitors, while simultaneously promoting and providing the educational and developmental opportunities for all students. Now, at Sharon, we did not start this week. We started since last week. That was the important thing, because we knew that for this week, when we have to have staff meetings and various other meetings, it would have been too laborious. So that's why we started last week where, like I said, we established the protocols in the classroom. Then we knew what systems we would have used. And therefore, this week, we were able to fine-tune those approaches so that when parents and guardians came, we were able to explain what we did and seek their approval. This situation is not an untenable situation. To say it plainly, it is not incapable of being coped with. We can cope with this situation, but it is going to take a whole set of characteristics. It means, number one, we have to understand that we have to adjust. Much adjusting has to be done. Two, we are going to have to understand, in fact, the ability to understand person's perspectives and the willingness, that's it, the willingness to adjust. And if there is a problem, instead of simply complaining, we all get together and look for a solution. That's the only way. Being united and following through with whatever solution we arrive at instead of simply quarreling. We don't have to do that. God will give us the strength. He will download ideas into our mind. We can cope with the situation 
only if we work together. And to all the parents out there, like I said, just try to understand the principle, understand the approaches that he or she will implement. If you have ideas, you can state them. And if there's any little problem, remember, help to find a solution. This is a process. It is not it is not anything set in stone. We will tweak until things will work and God will help us. Wow, that, that was the principal of Sharon Primary School, Pamela Small-Williams, sharing her thoughts. Um, Heather, what, what do you think about what um, Pamela is saying? Well, as I listen to her, I'm saying, wow, she is so right, you know, and she has eloquently put it as well. Mm -hmm. And because it's, it's just this, working together you know i find that very often we see problems but we don't look for solutions you know we will get out there as um my colleague said just now where we will quarrel and we want to pull down and we want to tear down what example are we setting for our children you know so i do agree that we need to work together and once we do that and when the children see that parents and the, the school, that there's that symbiotic relationship, you find that you get so much more out of your children. And I agree. And with God, in the midst of everything, yes, we know that the COVID-19 is real. And we mm -hmm. don't want to put our heads in the sand and, and bury it and say, you know, it will just go away. We know it is there. But God will give us the direction if we are being led by him, guided by him, and ask him on a daily basis and let prayer, because I must say to you that prayer too has been, uh, I, I mean, we have been praying. We yes. had the um, persons from the, the school who prayed for, for us. They came in on Monday and they prayed. And yesterday morning, God just allowed me to get one of the parents to pray rather than a teacher to do it. And I mean, I mean, she yeah. just moved, the Holy Spirit just moved through her in that building yesterday morning and prayer. So keeping God in the midst of it and using that channel of prayer, you know, we yes. know that through him we can do all things and nothing is impossible with him. Indeed, so once indeed. we put those things in place, yes, we can, we can work through COVID-19 and keep our children safe. Well doing. Correct. So. Right. I want to, I want you to hear another one of your f um, former colleagues. Well, um, in the in the public school, the principal of Cuthbert Moore Primary School, Mrs. Melanie's Ali. Our approach at Cuthbert Moore Primary is the face to face framework. We'll be implementing that on Monday. We have all students in, and of course, we have all our protocols in place: hand sanitizing, our social distancing, etc. And our students will be in all day, and our teachers are all ready, and we are excited for the reopening of school. We'll be in every day, Monday to Friday. Our day begins at 9, roughly 8.45, and our day ends at 2 p.m. as we have our dismissal, etc. So I met with my management team, and we discussed the framework that we want to implement, of course, with the ministry. And then we met with our teachers. We actually came in on Monday, and we tried to organize so that we can have our social distancing implemented in the nursery. Of course, students must be six feet apart, but we're going to implement the three feet for all of the students with masks on. Of course, students will be allowed mask breaks during the day, and that's exactly what we've implemented. Our planning started last week, even prior to that. The timetable committee was in last week to actually plan the timetable in, and they've worked very hard on that. My senior teacher, she's head of the timetabling committee, and of course, we have to do some adjustments, so to speak, to our timetabling, but we're getting everything done. We're getting everything in place, and we're going to hit the ground running on Monday. Of course, individuals will be anxious. There will be anxiety, but just... Trust us as teachers, we are going to adhere to the protocols. We are not going to endanger any individual's life, so to speak. We have to protect ourselves also, and we have everything in place. There will be anxiety, but we're going to work to make this happen. As our Prime Minister said, we're in this together, and at Cuthbert Moore, we're going to make things happen, I can assure you. Well, you, uh, no, no, you're, you just heard your other colleague, um, Heather, and... One of the things I want to ask you is, how is that process on timetabling going? 
Oh, well, about two weeks ago, I asked um, one of my the members of my management team. I said to him, we need to start on the timetables, and um, I gave him two other persons to work with him, and I would also be part of that. And yes, we have our timetables. They are there, but like as my colleague just said, tweaking because timetabling is not an easy job. Sometimes parents, they quarrel, and they quarrel when they recognize that. Um, but I didn't get the timetables yet, but it is not an easy job. You start it, and when you think that you have everything right, then you recognize, oh, my, but there's a clash here. Um, one person is supposed to be at two different um, classes at the same time and so on. So you do have to do the tweaking. But ours, yes, um, Mr. Farnham and his team, and he brings them to my attention. They have had their um, timetables because the mandate was that we want the parents to have these timetables in their hands as soon as possible. So my team, they're working assiduously. And um, if we don't have them by Friday, I can assure you very early next week we will have them. Um, and if it is, teachers will be letting parents know beforehand what the children will be doing the next day. But right now, the timetables, they are almost finished. Wonderful, wonderful. And and I'm glad to hear, I'm glad to hear that. I have one more clip, but I'm not going to play that one this evening because we're kind of running out of time. I couldn't even be, believe when I was told that we have three more minutes. Now, Heather, one of the things that, I, and which means, Heather, that you stayed with me for 45, 45. But one of the things that I want to um, close off with and I want to ask you, 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 you consistently uh, share with us, you know, the importance of all that you're doing and, and everything. But there's some parents who are listening, not just from the People's Cathedral Primary School, but all around Barbados. What message would you want to give them today? Because there's some of them who are still uneasy. And, and this evening's program, I really wanted to ensure that, that parents are comfortable in their minds, that principals are doing all that they have to. These are just, they're just three um, principles we heard from. We have another one that we'll hear from probably next week. But uh, my, my question to you is, what would you say then to those parents to, to assure them that, you know what, take the, the, not even a risk, because it's not a risk anymore. Get the children out to school. Get them back into the setting. Let's, let's, let's hear from you as we close out this evening's program. What I would say to the parents, and anxiety, we all know anxiety is there, and it can be good. But too much of it then, as we know, when that brings the fear and everything, that is not good, and this can be transferred to the children as well. What I would say, though, is that if you have a fear, and your fear is real. I might not think so, but your fear is mm -hmm. real. I think you should be able to contact the school, let the school, the principal, or the management team, the board of managers, according to how your, the structure of your, your school is, and let them know, well, this is the fear that I have. This is the fear that I have. What's, you might even ask, well, what are you doing to, um, in case such and such happen? And listen for an answer. And you know what? Give some answers. And I can tell you I've had that because I know there could be maybe one or two parents who would have written by email and they would ask questions and they gave some answers. Not all the answers you might be able to apply at a school and so on, but that was, that was good because yes. they showed that they were not just looking at what could be problems, but what then could be solutions, and you can do it maybe this way. Mm -hmm. And it's obvious that it might not um, mm -hmm. be good for us at the moment, but we take it into consideration. So the thing is dialogue, dialogue, dialogue with yes. the school. And it's a two-way thing. It's not just from the parents, but we, the school, when these things come to us, we should then dialogue back yes. with them. Thank you so very much. Uh, this evening we had a wonderful conversation with Heather Bryan from the People's Cathedral Primary School. She was also a former principal of the Christchurch Girls back then and spent 50 years in education assuring us this evening that it's quite safe for us to get back up to school to get our children back to school and encouraging parents this evening. I also want to thank the, the principal of the Sharon Primary School and I also would want to thank the principal of the Cuthbert Moore Primary School for their contributions this evening in Dear Sir. I want to encourage you to join us next week 
um, invite a friend, tell somebody we're on 6.15 to 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. As well as I want to say thank you to our sponsors, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, for coming on board with us and supporting parents during this challenging time. God bless you.